Hello and welcome to video 34 in my Rigging in Maya series. We're getting dangerously close to finishing this rig and this series. Once this section is complete, all we need to do is skin him, add in root control support and lock him down and then he's ready to be animated. So let's not waste any more time, let's jump right in and start rigging the tongue. And with an animal like the dog or cat, this is an important area as it's in use most of the time. Before we start work, I wanted to ask you something. Are you enjoying these videos and would you like to see more? Well, if so, there are a number of ways you can help support future content. The first is to simply head over to my coffee page and treat me to a coffee to say thank you. The second is to head over to the Ant CGI store. Here you can download the assets for each of my courses, but don't worry, there are plenty of free downloads available too. The third way you can help is to join the Ant CGI Club. Membership starts from as little as 99p a month and in return you can earn yourself some exclusive rewards. These include member only videos, a limited edition Ant CGI pin badge and a discount on all Ant CGI merchandise. There are a few ways you can join. The first is to simply click the join button below this video and become a member of this YouTube channel. The second is to head over to my Patreon or Coffee pages and become a member there. So there you go, the future of this channel and its contents is in your hands. To get more information on how you can help, follow the link on the screen or in the description below. So to make things easier, I've exported the model into a separate scene, so we can focus on this without the other systems getting in the way. The good thing about the tongue is that we can use a lot of techniques we have already covered over the course of this series. So with that in mind, I won't be going over all those again, which should make this video a lot shorter. Otherwise, this could have ended up being another three or four part section, and we'd end up covering a lot of the stuff we've already covered before. So even though I will be using some scripts to automate some areas of the rig, if you have followed the series so far, you will know how to create them manually. So here we have the model, and as you can see, I've added in a basic joint chain. If we switch to the side view, I've added a joint on each second edge loop. And this is because we don't need each loop to be skinned. We will be using a ribbon again, which will take care of those in between sections. I can rotate all these joints, sort of like using FK controls, and you can see how much movement we are getting. So, if we skinned this now, we would have some nice basic movement. Okay, so as I mentioned, we're going to be using a ribbon. So let's build that first. And again, to speed things up, I'll be using the ribbon creation tool. If you aren't sure how to build a ribbon from scratch, please refer to the earlier video in this series on ribbons. Like with the face rig, we need to generate a ribbon based on the model's surface, and this will go around the outside of the tongue. So, let's select the upper edge loop, and define it as the outer edges. Now the lower edge loop, and this will be where we want the inner edges. So we need to define a name, so we'll just call it tongue ribbon. Overall scale, we'll just leave that at one. We also want to add the controls. And we need the driver offset groups too, just like with the lips and the eyelids. Control ratio should be set to two, because we want the controls to match the main joint chain. So we get a control on every second edge loop. Finally, the control offset is minus 0.25, which will move them away from the model, making them easier to see and select. Let's generate this. There we go, nice and easy. Remember, in the previous video, I also showed you how to manually generate a ribbon from a model surface without using a script. So you can always refer back to that again if you're not sure or if you want to do this manually. If I move one of these controls, you will see that the animator will eventually be able to use these to add more shape to the tongue so it could move over the dog's teeth as it's panting, for example. Now we have all the joints we need. 
So let's skin the model to them. I'll hide the models. And also the control joints, so we don't select them. I want to now select all the follicles. And the tongue joints. Bring back the models. Select the model and go to Skin, Bind Skin and open the options. We just need the default settings for now, but change Bind to Selected Joints and Weight Distribution to Neighbour, which will make painting weights easier. And let's bind those. So you see, I can move the controls and the tongue deforms now. So we can pose it and reshape it. We can also move the main joints. But then the middle of the model moves away from the outer, so it isn't ideal. So let's get the outer controls to move with it. And this is a very easy step. All we need to do is parent them to the closest joint. Let's start at the tip. We want these four controls here. And usually I would just have one control at the tip. We have two, just because of the way the tool works. Now remember, we want to parent the offset groups, not the controls. So, now we know which controls we need, we can select those in the outliner. Then select the joint and parent them to it. Now the next controls. Select the offset groups and parent them to the next joint. OK, the next one. I'll just speed through the rest. As an alternative option, you could always use a parent constraint instead of parenting to the joints directly. This will mean that the controls are kept separate, plus they won't deform when we make the tongue stretch. But we'll see an example of this later in the video. For now though, parenting is fine. So, if we select some joints now, and rotate them, the controls follow. And we can still use them to pose the outer geometry. OK, so that's the main outer controls added. We do need to make one adjustment though. If you remember, with the lip and eye controls, the driver group's pivots had to be at the jaw and eye joint positions, just so they rotated correctly when we automated them with those extra attributes. We need a similar thing here. So with each driver group, its pivot is currently at the same place as the control. We want to add in a curl, which will rotate the controls around the middle of the tongue. So the driver group pivots need to be moved to the main joints. Let's hide the geometry. Select the controls. And pick walk up to the driver groups. Now press insert. And holding V, move the pivots with the middle mouse button to the inner joints. Just like this. In this instance we don't need to worry about the orientations for this rig. So just moving the pivot is fine. So let's update the rest of the driver groups now. Those are all done. So if I select these driver groups here and rotate them, you see the tongue curls around the middle now. So we can use this later to automate a curl. OK, so now we need to add in the main controls which will drive the tongue. And what we need is an IK spline based system which will give us more flexibility. Luckily we've created this before, both with the spine and the tail. So we want exactly the same setup here. Again, I'm going to speed things up by using the Dynamics Joint Tool, something I created earlier in the series for you, to help with those setups. 
As I said earlier, if you don't have the script, then you can refer back to the tail video to see how this is set up manually. It's exactly the same setup, but without the dynamics. In this instance though, I don't want the dynamics option. But then again, thinking about it, that could be a nice feature if the dog is running with its tongue hanging out of its mouth, like dogs normally do. That's something to think about actually. But yeah, I think for now, I'm just gonna leave that off. Now I've updated the tool a little bit to allow you to build the system without the dynamics option. All we do is select the root of the joint chain, give the systems a name, so we'll just call it Tong again, disable include dynamics, and then click make dynamic. I might change the name of this tool, maybe to IK spline tool now, we have the option to skip the dynamics part. And there we go, that's all built for you. We have the FK controls. And we can use this to switch to IK. Giving us the controls so we can manipulate and pull it around. Let's hide the joints. So as you can see, it's also stretchy and has volume preservation too. So you see here, the controls have deformed too because they're parented to the joints. So when they scale, the controls are scaling too. And like I said earlier, a way around this would be to use a constraint instead of parenting them directly. Now, I don't mind this though, and it makes the rig cleaner too. Now I know we skipped a lot of the main areas there, and just use scripts, but we have covered them before, so I don't want to bloat this video going over things we have already covered. Now, if you prefer, I will create a standalone video, which isn't part of this series, showing a similar setup, but in a little bit more detail. Let me know in the comments below if this is something you would like. So that's the main controls in and working. So now let's add in the curl I mentioned earlier. So you see here on the main control, I've added a new curl attribute. And this is just a float attribute ranging from zero to 10. The idea is this attribute will make all the outer controls rotate up like this. So we'll eventually curl the tongue. Let's bring the control into the node editor and open it. So there's the curl attribute. What we need now are the driver groups. So let's select the first two controls here. Pick walk up, and then bring those in too. Organize these. We just need the groups to rotate like this. So along the X axis. But we aren't going to connect the curl directly. Instead, we are going to use a remap value mode. This is so we can have the same flexibility as we had with the lips. So let's create one and rename it, changing the end to remap. So curl is connected to input value and connect out value to rotate X on both groups. Okay, let's close this. So if I adjust the curl attribute, we get a very small movement on the controls. And remember we had this before when we were setting up the blink. This is fine though. We just need to update the remap value node. So let's find it. And we need the input and output ranges section. In this instance, the output max value will dictate how far the driver groups should rotate. So as this is set to one, we aren't getting much of a rotation. And again, we had the same issue with the blink. So let's set this to 40 instead. And now the controls curl up to meet each other. We can adjust this to fine tune it if needed. So this is the rotation when curl is set to 10. 
if we adjust curl, you will see that the controls reach the top too early. So they have moved by the time curl reaches one. This is because of the input max value here, which is currently saying that we should reach the output max value, so 40, when the input value hits one. So all we need to do is change input max to 10 instead. So now the rotation is being spread between the input min value of zero and the input max value of 10. So it's using the whole attribute. So we get a smoother rotation now. What we need to do now though is go through and apply the same network to the rest of the controls. I'm just going to speed through that now. And yes, I'm using a sneaky script to help me and I will include this with the source files. Okay, those are all added and are set up the same as the original controls. The beauty of using the remap value node is we can add an offset so we can get a ripple effect moving down the length of the tongue. All we need to do is change the input min and input max values to change when each control starts and stops moving. Select the first control and pick walk up to the driver group so we can see the remap node. So with the first control, let's go back to the default values. So it starts when curl is at zero, but then reaches the top at one. With the next control, we can simply add one to the base values. So input min is one and output max is two, offsetting when these controls start and end move. We can work our way down, adding those offsets to the rest of the controls. And again, I'll just speed this section up a little bit as I just go through each control in turn. Now we can adjust the curl attribute. You see, the controls don't all move together. We get a nice ripple as it closes. Now this is a basic setup, so you could add more joints to get more of an arc as it curls. And if we wanted to, we could adjust the output max attributes on each remap value node to close it more towards the tip where the tongue gets thinner. So it's fully customizable. And everything works together too, so we can curl it and still pose it too. Okay, so that's the main setup for the tongue. So let's add it back to the dog now and include it in the main rig. So here we are back in the main scene. You can see the main tongue control here, which is simply parented to the head control, so it moves with it. You will see that the tongue IK and FK controls are here, parented to the jaw control, so that they move as the jaw moves. Although in the final rig, I probably wouldn't parent the IK controls to the jaw. Instead, these should sit under the root control, with some space swapping options being added, so they don't always follow the jaw, unless needed. We will look at those in a future video, or you could check out this video on space swapping for now to get a good idea of how to set that up. So we can open its mouth, and here it is. We can animate it with the FK controls, and tweak the shape too with these micro controls. Now what I would recommend is adding a new attribute to the main tongue control where the IKFK switch attribute is. Just call it something like show micro controls so that these smaller controls can be hidden when not needed. This just makes the rig a lot cleaner and easier for the animator to work with. So they only see the controls that they need at that time. So we can also switch to IK2 and then pose and stretch it this way. And still tweak it. We also have the curl control too. So that's the face and the tongue rigged. And this rig can easily be expanded upon 
to add more ribbons and controls to give the animator more to work with. I will be exploring this in more detail in a future course, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out. So what's next? Ah yes, I think at this point it would be good to finally skin the model to the joints and paint all the weights. So in the next video, I think we will do that. As an added bonus, I think what I might do is I might use NG skin tools as well, so I can demonstrate how that is used. And I've had a lot of requests from people asking me to show that. So if this is something that you would prefer, then please comment below and let me know. Okay, another video over. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Thanks for watching right to the end and remember to hit that like button and also subscribe to keep up to date with future videos. If you have any questions or suggestions, please post them in the comments below or alternatively, why not join the Ant CGI community Discord group where me or other members of the community will be more than happy to help. Remember to help support future content and keep these videos free, please visit the Ant CGI store or join the Ant CGI club. Alternatively, if you would just like to show your appreciation for these videos, why not treat me to a coffee at my coffee page? The link is on the screen now and in the description below. Thanks again for watching, this is Ant CGI signing off and I will see you on the next one.